This video is going to debunk the myths about video capture. This person is worried about the quality of the FireWire DV converters. This guy is saying do not use a FireWire DV converter at all. Do their comments have any merit? A few of the video clips in this sequence are purple. The other video clips are blue. The video clips will probably look identical, but they are not. As you folks can tell, this video clip has a color correction filter applied. This video clip has the same color correction filter with the same settings. As you can tell, I've raised the brightness slightly and I've added more contrast. I also increased the saturation to 200%. I'm going to make this full screen. Right now you're seeing video from my Sony a7 III camera. These video clips are from my Sony Hi8 camcorder. One was captured on compressed 10 bit with 422 color space using the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle. The other video files were captured using the Canopus ADVC 110, which is 8 bit with 411 color space. As you folks can tell, it's a 1080p sequence. Now we're using a 1080i sequence. The order of the clips is the exact same order as the other sequence. Once again, we have the Sony a7 video clip for reference, and here we have the Hi8 transfer video clips. Once again, I doubt you can tell the difference. Everything's crisp and clean. Keep in mind, folks, I'm just screen capturing the Adobe Premiere Pro real-time playback. Some of you are probably thinking, this looks better than your end result fully rendered out. If we look at the properties of these two video clips, we can tell the one is an AVI movie and the other one is a QuickTime movie. The one video clip is about 31 seconds in length, yet it uses over 800 megabytes. One minute worth of video using this particular video codec will use well over a gigabyte of space. The other video clip is using 4.79 gigabytes. If you notice, the video clip is a little over 22 minutes in length. Mini DV is about 12 gigabytes per hour. If you do simple math, you can tell this is the Mini DV codec. If we scroll down, we can tell this is on compressed 10 bit 422 color space. I used two totally different computer setups. I used two totally different capture devices, and I also captured in two totally different video codecs, but they look the same. Hypothetically, if Sony had a high definition camcorder that could record on compressed and it used 10 gigabytes per second, if you switched the settings to where it took five gigabytes per second, you'd be at two to one compression. If you changed the settings where you were at 250 gigabytes per second, you'd be at four to one compression. The reason being you're using one fourth the space that the uncompressed file used. You might think a lot of data has been lost, but you might not notice any difference between the four to one compression ratio file and the uncompressed file. The intensity shuttle by Blackmagic Design does require a TBC, but the built-in TBC on your VCR or eight millimeter camcorder will work just fine. Having said that, a lot of VCRs and a lot of camcorders do not have a built-in TBC. The Intensity Shuttle may not work for you. The Digital Fact website claims that the DV codec will pump up the red and green hues, making them look fake and unpleasant. As you folks can tell, that statement is incorrect. This website also claims the DV codec will suffer from pixelation in bright colored areas. I actually brightened the image and there was no pixelation. That website also claims the DV codec will have a contrast different from the source. The source would be the original camera footage, but the ADVC110 matches the exact same colors as my Hi8 camera. I have the Hi8 camera connected directly to the TV. It may look like it's going through the ADVC110, but it is not. 
the colors and contrast of the Hi8 camera match the colors and contrast of the video clip that was captured with the ADVC 110 and is now being played back using Premiere Pro and the ADVC 110 to the same exact TV. The colors look identical. Some of the cheap USB video capture cards can alter the image slightly, not just with colors, but it can crush the dynamic range. Some could argue that my TV is not color calibrated. That is irrelevant. If something has a bluish tint with one device, it has a slightly bluish tint with the other device. If one looks slightly blown out, the other looks slightly blown out. The colors all match, including purple and red. The statements at the Digital Fact website are incorrect. Somebody asked when you're using the Canobus ADVC 110, should you capture the video in ProRes, HEVC, or something else? Some software programs will let you capture from a FireWire DV converter into the MPEG-2 format, H.264 format, and even 10-bit uncompressed with 422 color space. The problem is, once the DV converter does the conversion and sends the data down the FireWire port, it is 8-bit 411 color space at 25 megabits per second. The cheap USB video capture cards would have the same problem. The software might allow you to capture in 10-bit uncompressed with 422 color space, but the hardware of these cheap USB video capture cards might be limited to 8-bit 411 color space with some type of compression. Lord Smurf is one of the main people at the VideoHelp.com website as well as the Digital Fact website. Lord Smurf has stated DV has blocks and crushes chroma. I think the problem is the crappy software this person uses. At the Video Help website and Digital Fact website, they are obsessed with the ATI all in wonder graphics cards. I would never recommend somebody build an old Windows XP computer with the ATI all in wonder graphics card in it just to capture VHS tapes. The FireWire DV converters can work on brand new Windows PCs as well as brand new Macintosh computers. The DV converters are also external. You can use them on a laptop or a desktop. You don't have to build a computer around it. Why buy a $2,000 Canopus DV Storm or Matrox RTX card when you could get an ATI for $200 to $400? People didn't buy $80,000 Avid Media Composers in 1998 simply to capture video. They needed it to output to broadcast compliant hardware as well as do video capture. Here is the Canopus ADVC 110 tapping into Premiere Pro. People want to use the software of their choice to log and digitize tapes. Keep in mind, Lord Smurf says you should not use programs like Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is playing out to broadcast compliant hardware using the Canopus ADVC 110. With the Intensity Shuttle, I can drop standard definition video clips into a 1920 by 1080 timeline and see exactly what they'll look like on broadcast compliant hardware. According to the Digital Fact website, what you see in this photo is professional equipment. You should have a cheap USB capture card from ATI, Pinnacle, Tevion. This is what professional equipment looks like. You can tell it has XLR connectors as well as BNC connectors. These devices will give you full control of the Betacam decks and the three quarter inch decks. You folks can read the comment where the person saying the folks at digitalfact.com state the ADVC 110 doesn't have a built-in TVC. You can read towards the bottom where somebody says, stay away from that website. Video snobs on there trying to sell you TVCs at $2,000 and will give you false information. Is that statement correct? They do seem to be selling equipment all the time. You can see the USB capture device by Pinnacle and here we see it again for $175. I'm wondering if it's the same exact device that you can get for $48 brand new. As you can tell, I purchased this product, but I would not recommend it over a FireWire DV converter.
The cheap USB video capture cards can be problematic. Sometimes they'll work with Windows XP, but they will not work with Windows 8. If you import the video clips into iMovie, Final Cut Pro 10, or Premiere, sometimes the audio is distorted or the video looks funky in other software programs. Last but not least, some of these cheap USB video capture cards can affect the dynamic range. The whites get blown out and the shadows get crushed to black. I will admit some of the cheap USB video capture cards can work just fine, but it's hit or miss. The Canopus ADVC 110 and the Blackmagic Design Intensity Shuttle are more of a professional product. Both products can work for Mac and PC. The Firewire DV converters do not need drivers. They simply rely on the Firewire protocol. The Intensity Shuttle does need a driver. Since the Intensity Shuttle is a discontinued product, they could stop driver support at any time. I'm sure some people are wondering why would digitalfact.com have this information if it's incorrect. I'm not sure. You can post this video in the discussion form at digitalfact.com as well as the discussion form at videohelp.com and see what type of answer they give you. I would also ask those people to see a demonstration video or at least a sample of their work. I'm going to end this video by stating I would be willing to do a live stream with the people at Video Help dot com and digitalfact.com. They can contact me through Facebook. I will leave a link in the description box.